I was running around a little bit because I thought we did print off a copy of this artwork and put it up. If you go to our website, you can see it. If you go to our Facebook page, you can see it. But our national UCC put on had an art contest. And there was 444 submissions and Anson's was picked in the top one. 78. 75. And only the two of people in America. Wow. wow. In Minnesota. In Minnesota. <laughs> You're one of the two kids in Minnesota that was chosen. Wow. wow. And wow. Yeah. So today's scripture is about plucking grains and about stretching out and healing people during the service, which some people thought that was a bad idea. But Jesus says, no, that's what's needed. Turn it off. <laughs> All right, we'll turn that off. Return him to his home. <laughs> You can sit down. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Invite the choir to come up. Yes. <laughs> 
the spirit is in me. <laughs> well, one of Kylie's and I's favorite shows that we it, it's now over and only have five seasons about was New Amsterdam. And what I liked about New Amsterdam was it was it was about Bellevue, the First Nations Public Hospital in Stillness, and, and how they struggled to write right people with health care amidst all the rising costs the struggle to go, look through the systems and go through the systems to find ways that people can be helped rather than say i'm sorry we do not have the resources i'm sorry you do not have the insurance i'm sorry we do not have the expertise so it, it's a little bit of a as one of my uh facebook friends said yeah, Max Goodwin, who was the new chief of staff, is a little bit of a white savior, you know. And, <laughs> and he tries to be, and, and, and you know, and often it's pie in the sky, they get it figured out by this ingenious way of, uh, or whatever they did. Um, but he, he tried, he tried to solve the op opioid crisis, and failed. He tried to solve racism, and failed, and he tried to in the last season with the debate on abortion. He tried to buy a boat and send it down to Texas and have it out in international waters so people could go out. And the guy says, well, the boat you bought won't even make it out of the harbor before it sinks. <laughs> but he also made sure that the people were taken care of, the people came first, no matter if they were on the board, no matter if they were his colleagues or working under him, no matter if they were the patients. And often his first question out of his mouth is, how can I help? And if he thought the reason for that help was not, was good, he would do all he would move, try to move heaven and earth to get them that help. To challenge the system, to challenge the people, to challenge the mores, to set challenge whatever needed to be challenged so that person could be healed, so that per family could be helped. We have in our nation, uh, well, back to the beginning, but we have this right and wrong. This is the right way, this is the godly way, this is the holy way, and this is the wrong way, this is the bad way, this is the sinful way. And they just, it often gets to, this is the right way for us. Right and wrong, though the people, and we try to do it in moral absolutes, right and wrong becomes, well, this is right for us, meaning this is better for us, rather than this is right for everybody, this is better for us, we're going to do it this way because it's better for us. It's not life and death, it's better and worse are right and wrong. It's wrong for me, but you know, go for it. No. This is found in the Bible. We, 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 I, and many uh, people that I talk to in this community don't like read much of the Bible because it says all the bad stuff. And one of those is the book of Joshua that says that God commands them to go and commit genocide. It's good for the Israelis that they get this land. It's bad for everybody else. But most writers, think, most scholars think that the Joshua story came later. And if you say, well, you get rid of all the Jebusites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the uh, Maccabites and I, all the other ites. I the bug bites. <laughs> Want to fight? You said? No, about the bug bites. Bug bites. <laughs> and so, you know, it says, and they said, and we would have cleared them all out, but then in all the other chapters, and Kings and Samuel and Chronicles and all that, they're still around, so they really didn't do that. And it was also, so it was looking back, we wish we could have just kept the land for ourselves, and so let's write this in there. And unfortunately, that thought and that biblical literalism stays today in what we call Christian nationalism. It is right for us as white Christians 
who are of a certain income level to make sure that we stay right here and whatever is right for us is better for the country. And other others should be pushed aside. But uh, I, I cannot remember, and I tried to look it up, I can't remember the source of it, but it is very, very important to say, yes, it may be biblical, but is it Christ-like? Is it Christ-like? Yes, you may find that in the Bible, but even Jesus argued with Scripture, you have heard it said, love your neighbors and hate your enemies, but I tell you to hate, to love your enemies. You have heard it said, but I tell you. So Jesus is in his beginning gospel of Mark. We're going back to the beginning a little bit. And, and Jesus is born, and he's raised a Jew, and he, and, he, and he feels very at home and comfortable in his Judaism. Now, for the most part of the most 3,000, 4,000 years that Judaism has been around, it has focused on practices and rules. Now, we as Christians, most Christians will say it's orthodoxy, orthodox. We have to have the right belief. We have to have the right way of thinking. But in Judaism back then, and for, for most of the part in Judaism today, it is the right practice. Doing the right thing or doing the wrong thing that, that raises you or lowers your standing in that religion. In that practice. So that's why you have non-practicing Jews. They hold on to their cultural identity, but they said, I'm non-practicing, meaning they are not following all of the commandments or traditions or doing all the feasts. So when Jesus goes and feeds his disciples by grabbing, or walking through the field on a Sunday and grabbing the kernels off the stocks and giving them to everybody. And they said, oh, God forbid. You're supposed to make your meal on Friday before sunset, and you're supposed to use that to eat the whole day. God forbid that you eat something, create something, do something that's out of the practice and out of the tradition. But he replies, well, no Sabbath is made for humankind, not humankind made for the Sabbath. Rules are made to help humans, not humans are there to put, obey the rules. And the same thing is when Je Jesus enters on another Sabbath, he enters a synagogue, and what does it say? They watch him to see what he will do. They're not sitting there, oh, let's wait till he speaks and we're going to catch him in a theological argument. No, we are going to nail him to see what he does. It's just like every child when I was growing up that you had to sit there quietly and if you moved a little bit or giggled or, or caught doodling on your, you were, oh, you're a bad Christian. You're a bad child for not just sitting there and behaving. So, it, so, but I can imagine Jesus walking into the synagogue and on the Sabbath and he's looking around and seeing people and he sees the man with the withered hand and he walks up and he says, how can I help? There's no words there. They didn't record the words, they only recorded the actions, but I do imagine that he says, he often says, what do you want me to do for you? What is it that you're asking? How can I help? So we did right or wrong. How did how did you uh, put it, Jenny? What, what was your two sides of it when you were introducing Spirit you? Spirit or law? Spirit or law? Intent, intent. Uh, and intent or law? I would almost. I, I would. I, I think that's good. And, but I, I thought of life or death. Moses, when 
He's giving the law, even Joshua, when he's rewriting the law. Here are the ways of life, and here are the ways of death. Choose. As for me and my family, he says, we are going to choose the way of life. So in this scripture, we can see Jesus. He's choosing life. You're hungry? Here you go. Here's from the grave. You're hurting? You're he you healed? Here, I will heal you. And then it says the Pharisees and the Herodians, who absolutely hate each other, gather together. See, even Jesus brings his enemies together. He, he brought into the Herodians and the Pharisees on that day. On the Sabbath day, they went off to conspire to kill him. Life and death. Now, we have to be careful in our, especially right now, about lumping all Jews together, lumping all the Israel. Back then, uh, you know, as, as, Jenny said, there are the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the Herodians, the Temple, the Essenes, all these different groups, and they all had different ideas about, you know, and some groups kind of supported Jesus and some groups didn't. And, you know, so it wasn't that all Jews were against Jesus. As I said, Jesus was raised, lived, and died as a Jew. So we can't lump them all together and say, I mean, Jesus went into the synagogue and every probably, most people in the synagogue were probably cheering and praising Yahweh and, and dancing that this man who lay low in the congregation now has a fully restored hand. And Jesus drew crowds and many of, most of those crowds were Jews. So we can't lump them all together back then and say they're all against Jesus. Just as today, we can't lump all Jews together with what's happening over in the Middle East. Lots of Jews are feeling threatened and have been threatened or harmed or vandalized because we're using our anti-Semitism, we're using that as a prelude to anti-Semitism. Oh, okay, people are against the Jews now because of what's going on in Gaza, so now I can go and make derogatory comments, and I can go and vandalize, and I can go and post stuff and say stuff and, and hurt people. If you disagree with what the Israel nation is doing, or vehemently oppose their continued body, there are large groups of citizens in the Israeli countries that march every day in opposition to this. In New York, in New Amsterdam, and Berlin, there were large groups of Jews. So it isn't about identity, it isn't about this group or that group, it is about life and death. Do we do the things that promote life, not just for ourselves, but for everybody. Do we heal? Do we feed? Do we challenge those systems that harm people? Jesus said, sadness is created for humans. It is our time, our right, our gift to rest, to be restored, to be in good health. So we can give people food, as we do down in the food shelf. But we can also challenge the ways that people are working and starving because they do not have enough. We can heal people, which we try to do, maybe in our hearts, maybe in our minds, maybe with our bodies, our souls. But we need a better health care system. That's not focused on profits, but it's focused on people. And those systems that are bad, that are hurting people, that are killing people, we need to change them. Jesus called out the ways that the Pharisees or the Sadducees or the Herodians or the temple priests or the Roman government was hurting all people, 
not just himself, not just his family, but all people. But we center ourselves in that Sabbath to be, to find that rest so we can get up again, to find that restoration so that we can shine with that light, so that we can have good health to be able to help others engage. For God so loved the world that Jesus came to give us abundant life. Not the abundance of wealth, but the abundance of of love, of wonder, of community. Actions spoke louder than words. Actions of welcoming people, of opening the door, of setting another place at the table. Actions that become a way of life. To give life, to bring life, love life. Amen. Amen. Before you start, we are going to be doing a healing after this, uh, anointing and healing. So at this time, if you would try to center yourselves, if you have something that uh, would be centering for you, that would connect you to the spirit, to connect you to the breath, um, Byron shared this with me, and uh, you rub your hands together, and, and you can say, in the name, and you can say, God, Jesus, Spirit, love, whatever. In the name of God, I cleanse my body, and I cleanse my spirit, and then shake it off. In the name of God, I cleanse my body, and I cleanse my spirit. Let us come to prepare for healing. Coming to a time of anointing and healing, we will first do anointing. So you can come up to the front, coming up the center aisle, and be anointed, and then walk back to your seat. 
And then after we do an lighting, if anybody wants to ask for a deeper prayers and deeper healing, we'll bring the chair up here and we'll lay hands on you. Let us join into the liturgy. Do you reaffirm your faith in the love found through God? Do you take comfort in the assurance that even those things that are hidden from memory or too deep for our words, not beyond God's forgiving and reconciling love. God, who knows us completely, bestows pardon and peace. Take comfort in the assurance that even in pain and isolation, we are not beyond God's restorative love. God, who has created us in their image, bestows healing and hope. Amen. Let us ask for blessings upon the oil. Our God, our Redeemer, giver of health and liberation, give you thanks for the gift of oil. As the apostles anointed many who are sick, and you healed them, so may your Holy Spirit come on us and on this oil that all who receive this anointing in humbleness and faith may be made well and strengthened. Through Jesus Christ, our friend and Amen. Amen. We are invited to come forward. you and keep you, heal and strengthen you, love and save you. Heaven, God bless you and keep you, heal and strengthen you, love and save you. Amen. God bless you and keep you, heal and strengthen you, love and save you. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Heal and strengthen you, love and sick. Amen. God bless you and keep you. Heal and strengthen you, love and sick. John, God bless you and keep you. Heal and strengthen you. Bless you and keep you. Heal and strengthen you. Love and set you. Yes. God bless you. We keep you. Heal and strengthen you. Love and set you. So anybody who did not come up who wants to be anointed. that if any of you here want to come up and be, uh, be part of the healing process of laying hands on people, the elders, he said, call the elders of the church together. So I ask if there are any who want to come up to be a part and help lay hands. This doesn't take a lot of book learning. <laughs> This is being open to spirit and letting it flow. So. Now we ask <clears throat> if there are those here who would like to come up and sit and have their hands laid on them.
you like prayers for today? Clarifying, what is my service? Mighty and merciful God, you are giver of visions. Young men shall dream and all people will see visions. You give this, you have given Byron a vision as a young man and you told him to wait so that his vision the vision you have given him comes to fruition. As he works and struggles and ex looks forward with expectation, help to clarify and help to move into action and help to surround him with those with us who can move this forward, who can follow you Could be part of the spirit. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. What do you want? As we said in the psalm, we proclaim, God searches us and sees us, knows us, what's in our hearts and our minds. Do you know the gifts that this young person has? And the talents and the joy He asks for a car. We do not know why. But whatever is behind that vision, whatever is behind us asking, we ask that you help it to come to fruition. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. A bunch of introverts. <laughs> <laughs> I had two weeks of relatively sinus free, and I came back here and walked right up. I don't know how can we help. Oh, a clearing of the sinuses will be a very good start. We ask that the Holy Spirit comes upon us in our community and helps in all. Find relief from his symptoms. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer of thanksgiving. We give praise and thanks to you, O God, by the Holy Spirit. You have given us life, brought to ministry, forgiveness, healing, and peace. You give to the disciples to heal the sick and to continue the healing ministry among us to this day. Keep us mindful of your love and mercy, that we may be faithful throughout all our days. In the name of Jesus. As we come into a time of prayer, ask them what joys there are to be shared this day. More than I 
just got back from two weeks of an Alaskan cruise and drive up as far as Fairbanks. It was a, a, a wow, wow, wow experience. It's just huge. It's a lot like us, only much bigger. <laughs> and we got the, we, I got to play golf on the northernmost golf course in the United States, <laughs> the Midnight Sun Golf Course, uh, north of Fairbanks, 64 degrees plus north latitude. They advertise it as where golf meets permafrost. <laughs> <Very much true. laughs> oh, I forgot to mention. This was an early celebration of our 60th anniversary. Oh, wow. <laughs> Afraid to be joyful about this because I'm afraid it's part of your hay fever. But the crab apple tree out in the corner has to be seen today. Um, I have a couple things. One, um, Anna and I were able to attend on Thursday night Ben's uh, piano recital. And that was phenomenal. It was just really great to see kids all the way from, I don't know, five years old to 13, 14, um, just be brave to be in front of a crowd of people and play and just do a big bow at the end and be beaming with pride. And it was, it was great to see. And then on Thursday, Thursday, no, Friday night I went to graduation for junior high for GES and we had a few of our kids that are in youth group um, graduate from GES and it was great to see um, each kid got up and talked for about five minutes and it was amazing to see how all of them could articulate what had happened through their process of five years old to you know eighth grade and um, it's not so much that kids don't learn in school, but the way they, at eighth grade, what, were able to articulate what they were learning was amazing to me, and it was really inspirational. So those are great things that are happening in our community. And this, the seventh graders also displayed a lot of bravery seeing oh, yeah. in front of everyone. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a joy as well, yeah. people being brave. And son had his uh, 40th birthday on uh, Friday and it was very very special because um, over the years neither Barb or I nor I never thought he would make it mm. and he's made it and he's a true blessing for us. Concerns to be brought up are people need to be lifted up in our time of prayer. The usual summer folks that come here, Hazel, Belbo, and Marsha Cushmore, aren't going to come this summer, mm -hmm. which is sad for me. Uh, Marsha's daughter is diagnosed with lung cancer this week, mm -hmm. uh, Katie. So keep Katie in your prayers. Oh. 
prayers for uh, those people who are um, having memory issues and it impacts their whole life and you know learning to live with that and also for the caregivers who watch that uh, loss take place in front of them and um, it, it's so easy to feel worn out. She did come and visit us uh, over Christmas time, yeah. I believe. Yeah. And we have a name tag out there waiting for her, so we <laughs> hope that she can come and wear it soon, soon, soon. Let us continue in prayer. We continue to lift up in prayer, though, oh God, those on our prayer list of Sarah and Rhonda, Vicki, Mike, Sally, all victims of gun violence, immigrants and refugees, countries that are in turmoil, Congo, Ukraine, Sudan, Israel, Palestine, and for the healing of our planet. Those at home and in care centers, Jean, Nona, Lou, and Tom. Early followers of your son, Jesus of Nazareth, were called followers of the way. Help us in this day to not fight over what is the correct interpretation or what is this or what is that, but what is the way in our actions, with our votes, with our speaking out and speaking up, offering food and shelter to bring life to those who so desperately need it. Hear us and empower us as we pray the prayers taught by your Son. Our Father, Lord, come. come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And may we stand in the tradition, and deliver us from evil. May we be seen in the power of the Lord. Who is our announcer today? Bruce. We still have a number of holes on the uh, joint ministry volunteer list. Uh, I want to draw your attention to the fact that we are hosting the service in Harbor Park during Pride Weekend. That's June 16th. There are plenty of holes to uh, fill in here, so I'm going to start the list around. Uh, plenty of things going on. I want to ask you to save the date, June 18th, that's a Tuesday at 5.30. The, uh, Jenny and Jeff will host another edition of Loaves and Hot Dish at their home. 
So save that date. Uh, again, we need plenty of people to help out with the service on June 16th. If it's raining cats and dogs, the service will be here. Otherwise, it will be at um, Harbor Park. Um, and know your way Wednesday evening through Saturday evening. Yes. If there's an emergency, call you anyway. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and I will be at the um, annual meeting of the uh, Minnesota Convention uh, conference. Um, do you want to say anything about planning he planetary healing? Byron? Sure, we'll be gathering again Tuesday night, 7 to 8.30. Um, if you want to come and learn about it, and then feel free to leave. We'll take a little break. You'll experience uh, a healing technique that was given to me 45 years ago in teachers. Okay, uh, Thursday, Building and Grounds will meet at 11 o'clock. Um, how are we going to do that if Ben is going to be away? Uh, we can meet in person or somebody else. Arf usually sends out the Zoom. Arf usually hosts that. Okay, good. Um, and lastly, Barbara Childs, would you like to say something about the two projects you're doing? Thank you. So um, I have two things to announce. On Mondays at 12.30 at the Hub, my talks on health continue. Monday with kindness and compassion. We're going to talk about do some of us have sort of what feels like an almost addictive response to sugar and carbs and bread and chips. So we'll be talking about that this Monday at 12:30. Then the other announcement is beginning next Sunday at 9:45. We'll be gathering in the fireplace room to start study of this book called *A Course of Love*. And *A Course of Love* is written to remind us of how we are the love of God. We are all why it takes like this much for us to remember that. I don't know, apparently it does. So anyway, if you can't come till 10, that's okay, but we'll be gathering at 9.45 on Sunday mornings in the fireplace room. Bruce, can you repeat where the potluck is again? Potluck is at Jenny and Jeff's house on Fifth Avenue, across the street from... Uh, Great. Cooperation station. Uh, cooperation station. <laughs> yes, thank you. When is that again? Tuesday the 18th. Gather just giving at, you a heads up. Yeah, gather at 5.30, uh, eat at 6. It just didn't make it into the calendar, so. Pop-up. Pop-up. Loves and, <laughs> loves and hot, hot dish. <laughs> Any other announcements? All right, two things in, in the queues now. Uh, one is, I'm not sure when people lift up names, I can't remember things, first of all. And secondly, uh, I'm not sure if they want. So there are little queue request cards in there. So if you do lift up someone and it doesn't get put into the, you can pick these up and write it and turn it into the office or put it in the operating plate. And on the other side is a guest card for our guests so that um, if they want to learn a little bit more about us or that, let us know a little bit more about them. And then, every now and then there's a envelope that has, that you can put your offering in and if you want to direct it to some place, it, so Kevin knows where, when we're having special offerings or if you're paying part of your pledge or whatever, you can put it in, in this envelope and it will be given to Kevin. And on the back of the announcement page, there are other different things. We said we do things by action, the way of love. And, and uh, our love just isn't centered here on Sunday mornings, but it's centered throughout the week, and we do. I mean, Mondays you can go, not that you have to do everything, but we are a full service church, folks. So Monday you can go on and meet with, with uh, Sue and Mike and, and a few others. Tuesday, we have 
healing for prayers for the planet during over the lunch hour, which is a little 20 minute thing, and then the planetary healing there. We have the sing along with Ed, we have Tai Chi on Friday, we have the Harbor Watch on Saturday. So we, we are an active congregation, and that we are blessings. And to so support all of these things that we do with all of these things that are available for the community to be a part of. Should we be crass and say we need a little money? <laughs> Don't be crass. Okay. We would like this have an offering of all we have, of all we are, unto the God who has blessed us with all good things. Talk me out of a little more. <laughs> God, we ask for your blessings upon these offerings that we have made this day, so that these offerings may become blessings to the church, to the world, today and through this week. Amen. Amen. Let's join together in our closing hymn and follow it on page two. Glory, glory, hallelujah.
doing something a little different. Repeat after me. I am the salt of the earth. I am the salt of the earth. You are the God-given salt, the God-given love, the God-given salvation for the world. Repeat after me. I am the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Repeat after me. I am the leaven to raise up God's kingdom. I am the leaven to raise up God's kingdom. All you have to do is just a little bit. A little leaven goes a long way. A little love, a little action, a phone call. Your presence to bring and challenge the systems that bring about death. We, with just a little leaven, can raise up God's kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Thank you.